Hello YouTubers and fellow hams from the chilly, windy, <laughs> cool desert here in the dead of winter. It uh, was uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. I'll put Celsius over here somewhere. Uh, nice and chilly. Well, nice, I don't know, but chilly for sure. So the sun's out and it's warming up. Anyway, I thought I'd uh, do the first video of 2021. 20, I gotta get used to saying that now, 2021 today and talk to you about virtual machines. Now, many of you guys probably have run across VirtualBox, which is a great way to test out new operating systems without changing anything on your existing system. You just create a virtual computer in a window. It's completely isolated from your main system, has its own storage in the form of a file that emulates a hard disk. A uh, great way to test out software or new OSs and things. Well, uh, VirtualBox can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get installed. Um, I'm running uh, Debian testing, actually, which is the bleeding edge development version of Debian right now. Yeah, taking a chance, but uh, so far so good. Uh, and VirtualBox is not presently in the repositories, and I needed a virtual machine. Well, I almost forgot, but there has been a hypervisor as part of the Linux kernel for quite a while now. It's a kernel module called KVM, K Virtual Machine, or Kernel Virtual Machine, I guess the K stands for kernel. Maybe not. Maybe it's the part of the original KDE desktop or something. I don't know. But at any rate, it's there. Um, by default, Linux usually has this available to you, and it might be in the repositories and you have to install it, but it's there. An entire virtual machine suite uh, with most of the same capabilities and things that you might be used to in VirtualBox without having to go and download the extras and fiddle around with, um, well, there's a lot more installation stuff you have to do sometimes in VirtualBox. It can be a pain. So this is built right in. Anyway, let's go to the computer. I'll show you how you can install it and I'll show you how it works. Before I show you... Uh virtual manager, which is what we'll be talking about. A real quick overview of what a virtual machine is for those of you that may not be aware. So you've got your computer and it's running an operating system of some type and you can run programs within the operating system. But let's say that you wanted to create or you wanted another computer to test an operating system on. What a virtual computer is, is a virtual emulated computer within your operating system. So you've got your computer and its operating system running. And what you use, or what the virtual machine does, is it uses something called a hypervisor, which creates a, an area of memory that's completely isolated and then emulates all of the hardware that would be needed for a computer within that memory space, filtering um, the actual hardware of your computer into that space. So things like the keyboard, a mouse, serial port, peripherals, uh, video display, sound, all of that is emulated with software to create this virtual space within your memory that looks like a whole separate computer that can then run its own operating system and you end up with a computer within your computer. And this is useful for testing out things like different operating systems and such without actually changing the installation on your own hard drive. So let's go over and take a look at this. Okay, Virtual Machine Manager. This is the tool that allows you to create virtual machines within a uh, Linux uh, environment. And it uses a hypervisor that's actually a module that's part of the kernel. So it's, it, it comes right along with your OS. You don't, really don't have to um, install a third-party program in order to do this. You just need to install this Virtual Machine Manager and it's uh, associated support stuff. So let's uh, let's take a look at installing it. And I've got a virtual machine here that's Debian Linux. Let me start that up, and then we'll uh, we'll take a look at it here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want to just double click on it. There we go. So here we've got a virtual computer running within my computer. I'll throw this full screen. 
So let's say that you have a Linux installation and you want to install Virtual Manager uh, and then uh, run a virtual machine. Well, I like to use something called Synaptic Package Manager, which I've already installed here. It'll ask for your root password because it's going to install software on your system. And by the way, if you don't have this and you want to use it, uh, you can install it by opening a terminal. Control Alt T to open a terminal and typing sudo apt install synaptic. And that will install Synaptic Package Manager. You could also install your software right here at the command line. A lot of people like to do that. I like to use Synaptic because it's going to give me extra information. If I click on a package in here, I get a nice paragraph about what that package is with information. So I'll search for what we need. What we need is virt-manager. And here it is, virt manager. And uh, it says over here what it is, desktop application for managing virtual machines. If I click on that, I get a further paragraph down here about it. Uh, so this is why I like to use Synaptic. I can quickly see what things are. And I'll just check this box and select mark for installation. And then Synaptic is going to notice that we need a few extra things in order for this package to work. And it's going to give us that list of libraries and extra stuff that we need. And I can hit mark to mark all of those and just hit apply to install it. And that's all you really need to do to get the uh, virtual manager installed and ready to operate. Now, once you do, let me shut down this virtual machine. Once you do, you'll have this virtual machine manager. It should be under your system tools. Yeah, here we go, virtual machine manager. On the Mate desktop, it shows up under system tools. It should be somewhere similar on the menu system for whatever desktop you're running. Um, once you've got this, you can create a new virtual machine and you'll need uh, an installation media for the operating system you're gonna install. And we go up here and we just hit uh, create a new virtual machine and it'll walk us through this wizard. So uh, we're going to use local media and ISO image. And we need to select that ISO image. I'll open this browser. Now this browser, you have to add the directory over here that you're going to browse to have your, uh, that has your ISO images in it. I've already added uh, a directory that I keep them in and I've added my downloads directory. You can hit this plus to add the directory where you store your ISO images. Once we select that, then we will see the images that are in there. If I go to like downloads here, I should have an Ubuntu, yep, here we go, Ubuntu Mate 20.04, I'll select that. Uh, often it will automatically detect what OS you have. In this case, it didn't. So I'll uncheck that and I'll start to type Ubuntu there we go, Ubuntu 20.04. I think it didn't detect it because I'm using the Ubuntu Mate, which has the, the Mate or Mate desktop. So once this matches, that will auto-populate some of the fields for you on the rest of the wizard. I'll hit forward. We can choose how much of our memory we want to give over to the virtual machine. I'm gonna drop that back to 2K or 2, me, uh, 2 gig and how many of your CPU cores you want to devote to the virtual machine when it's running. I have four, I'll leave that at two, and we'll hit forward. And now we need to create a virtual hard disk for our virtual machine. This is gonna create a file in our file system of this size. So it's gonna create a 25 gig file and that file will be attached to the virtual machine as a hard disk. So it will think it has its own hard drive of this size, but all it really is is a file on your hard disk. So I'll leave it at 25. And then we name it. Um, okay, Ubuntu 20.04 test. Um, we'll hit finish. Oh, oops, can't put a space in there. No spaces in the name. Okay, finish. And it creates it. And it starts it up for us. So our virtual machine is now booting off of that ISO CD image, just like any other piece of hardware. 
So, you know, that's really all there is to setting it up. Now, once you've got your virtual machine set up, you can change a lot of the features and assets and hardware performance and stuff here. I hit this little light bulb. It gives us all the settings for our virtual machine. So there's a lot of things that we can control. Uh, this is the video driver that it's using for the virtual machine. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention here is if you're going to run a Windows virtual machine, oh, there's music from Ubuntu starting up. <laughs> if you want to run a Windows virtual machine and you want to try to use 3D um, acceleration for light gaming, I don't think it would run Crisis, but it might run some light games. You come down in here to this video QXL and select Virtio, which is their uh, fancier 3D uh, capable emulated graphics card. And then I can just check this to enable 3D acceleration. And that might give that virtual machine the ability to run 3D graphics for light gaming. I haven't tested it. I don't know how the performance is, but that is an option you can set there. So yeah, in here is where you can tweak and tune all of the settings for your virtual machine. If I click back on the monitor here, we'll go back to unapplied changes. Do you want to apply them? Yes. And changes won't take effect until the machine shuts down. Okay, I knew that. So yeah, that's where you can change and apply all kinds of settings to your virtual machine. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, one other thing. Let me shut this down. Okay. If you want to connect USB serial devices to your virtual machine, uh, for example, I've got this little extra Linux machine, but let's say I had a Windows machine for, for Windows-specific software for my ham radio stuff. Um, I don't have any software to show you, so I'm not going to use that right now, but we'll, uh, we'll do it in this Debian machine because I do have FL rig installed in there. I'm going to turn on my ICOM 705. You should hear it here in the background in a moment. And I'll put this up somewhere where you can hear some activity. 40 meters. Making an executive decision. We're not going up. This road is not safe. Okay. And I've got this Debian machine running. As you can see, the manager shows us that it's running. And if I want to see its screen, I'll just double click it. And I'll log in as myself. And we'll throw it full screen for you. Um, oh, actually, first I need to connect the USB device. Under this virtual machine menu up here, you'll see this redirect USB device. I have my ICOM 705 plugged in, and this is showing us a list of USB devices plugged into our computer. And you can see right here, ICOM IC705, that's the serial device from the ICOM. Uh, Burr Brown TI USB audio codec is the audio from the ICOM, so I could connect that as well. And what that does is that takes the USB connection that's in my laptop uh, from the ICOM and connects it, unhooks it from there and connects it to this virtual machine. So now let's go full screen again and we'll run FL Rig. Oh, you could hear the radio went silent while it's talking to it. I'll turn the volume up on the radio so you can hear this when I tune it. So you can see it is talking to my radio. So that's uh, that's how you can connect USB devices to a virtual machine. Uh, for example, well, I will be using I will be using this Windows virtual machine sometimes for programming software or Windows specific software. Let me see if I can start that at the same time. Do I have enough memory? Oh, apparently I do. We're pushing it now. <laughs> I've got my CPUs and my memory spread out between two virtual machines. All right, so there we go. We've got a Windows virtual machine running here. 
and I've got a Debian Linux virtual machine running here. Still talking to my radio. So yeah, I could have uh, I could have software running on my laptop in uh, this virtual machine, in the other virtual machine, in the Windows virtual machine, and here I could also just you know redirect USB device to the Windows box, select the ICOM, mm -hmm. and there you can see Windows is trying to install device driver software. With Linux, I didn't have to; it just recognized it. With Windows, I'd probably have to go download their uh, USB driver for the ICOM 705 and install it. But you can see that it works, so you know that's where it's useful. So yeah, um, let me shut this down. So yeah, that's Virtual Manager, a uh, virtual a virtual machine capability that's kind of built right in with the Linux kernel. And just install this vert-manager program and you can create virtual machines on your Linux box without having to bother with Oracle's uh, virtual box. So there you go. That's Virtual Manager and the KVM slash QEMU virtual machine that's part of m probably most all Linux distributions that are out nowadays. Hope you found that useful. Another tool in your toolbox. Happy computing and we'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.